Hi and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about cache, uh, the cache feature that's provided by Hibernate. Uh, earlier, I mentioned that Hibernate is much more than an ORM tool. Uh, Hibernate was started with the ORM problem in mind and uh, it was started as a solution for ORM. Uh, but uh, as you know, as features got added, there were a lot of other features that uh, Hibernate implemented, and uh, you know it became much more than an ORM tool. And one of the important features that Hibernate provides is caching. Uh, there are uh, there are multiple ways in which we can implement caching, and just like with anything else in Hibernate, it's configurable. But actually, what's happening is there is a level of cache that Hibernate provides for us by default without even doing anything. And uh, that is called as the first level of cache and that's implemented by the session object. So we've already seen that uh, when you, when you um, say you update an object that's in a persistent state and uh, you know you update it again, it does not actually result in two, uh, two different update queries. It doesn't necessarily result in two different update queries. Hibernate intelligently detects uh, you know, what is the minimum number of uh, queries that need to be run and based on that it triggers the update query. So it's not just for the update, even for the select. Say I do a select once and then there is no change as such and then I do another uh, select, I do a session.get, then Hibernate knows that it's already it already has the data in its cache, it does not trigger a select again. So this level of caching is already there, whether you uh, configure it or not, Hibernate automatically provides this first level of cache. But then there is a second level of cache that we can implement as well. So why do we need the second level of cache? The second level of cache is needed because uh, a session is not something that you would uh, you would hold for uh, a long period of time. As we've seen earlier, a session factory is something that's there for the entire uh, life of the application. But a session is something that you want to open when you need to talk to the database and then close it as soon as you're done talking to the database. So whatever caching happens in the session will not be there for a long time. So if you want, you're accessing a data that you had accessed in the earlier session, you would have to query uh, the database if the session is already closed. So you would want another level of cache that goes beyond sessions. So we can implement the second level of cache and that's what we're going to talk about in these tutorials. Uh, the second level of cache can be implemented in different ways. One is uh, across different sessions in an application, so which addresses the problem of, uh, hey, I closed the session, now the cache is lost. So say you open sessions at different points in the application, what happens is that all those sessions will have individual caches, the first level caches, but then there is a second level of cache that applies uh, across different sessions. So if it's not there in the first level of cache, you can, uh, it's likely that you'd, you'd find it in the second level of cache. Well, this is a different sessions in a single application. You can have a cache across different applications if they're all using Hibernate and they're working on the same, uh, you know, the same set of data. You might uh, feel the need to have a cache that goes across applications. So it's like different sessions in a different applications. So this is again something that you can configure and hibernate. And then the third thing is across clusters. So you have different applications deployed in different uh, different servers and they are all talking to the same uh, database and they're you know interacting with the same data. You can have a hibernate cache that supplies uh, you know cache data for across all these applications. But however you need to know that say you have uh, you know you have another application that is not using hibernate that might result in problems because uh, let's say for example you have uh, you have saved uh, some data in your uh, in your cache. Now the other application which is not using Hibernate would not know that there is this data in the cache, and it might directly go talk to the database. So there could be this kind of uh, you know um, a problem where. Uh, you know, an application which is not using Hibernate is totally not aware of the cache, might still end up, uh, you know, dirtying the data and, you know, t updating the data in the database and the cache might be, uh, you know, invalid. So 
Apart from this, as far as uh, you're configuring a single second level cache across applications, uh, Hibernate is going to take care of it. Hibernate will know that uh, there is an application that's written some data. Now, before a fetch happens, it automatically updates in the database so that the new fetch has the latest data. But if the fetch does not happen, Hibernate will intelligently keep it in the cache and try to minimize the uh, trips to the database. So having said that, first let's have a look at the first level cache that we uh, that we have in Hibernate. Again, I'll go back to the same uh, main method that I've had. I'm opening a session and I'm beginning a transaction. So in this uh, area, let me get a user object. So I'll say user details. I'll use a session.get. The session.get, of course, takes two parameters. One is the class and one is the ID. So I'll say user details dot class and I'll pass the ID as one. So I'm getting the, the user object with the ID as one. Of course, I'll have to cast this because this returns me an object. Since I know that it's a user details object I'm casting this here now I have uh, got this user object now if I run this let me clear this out now if I save and run this you can see that there is a select query so hibernate is actually issuing a select query to fetch this user object now what happens if I, you know, I th assume that there is a, there's a lot of code in between, but uh, here I will say user details user2 equals, I am getting the same user object here, but I'm casting it to a new uh, to then do a new user details object. So what I'm saying here is that uh, I'm, I'm getting this object once, okay? And then I'm getting the object, not using this reference, I'm actually asking Hibernate to get from the database. I'm passing the same primary key. I'm saying, hey, Hibernate, get me this object again. Now Hibernate knows that it's already got this, this object, so it doesn't really need to go to the database again. But let's see how many queries it runs this time. If I run this, there you go. It's still just one select. So the reason why it can, uh, you know, get away with just one select is because Hibernate knows that between this statement and this statement, in between these two statements, there is no uh, code that updates the user data. So what I mean by that is, uh, okay, let's say for example, I uh, I make this change here, user dot set username updated user so I'm changing the user property here now let's see what happens so here you can see it is uh, doing a select and it's doing an update but still it's not doing a select again. Now it's done an update. Now the database record has changed. Now why is it not doing a select for user two? It has to get the updated value, right? Well, what happens is since it's updated an object in the session, this object is already there. It's there in the cache. So again, there is no need for Hibernate to pull up this value. It, this user two that Hibernate gets is actually the updated user object. So. The, the point here is that Hibernate intelligently detects all these things. It does not go to the database unless it's actually required. So as long as you have made the change in the Hibernate session, Hibernate knows that, hey, this is the object that I already have. So it does not go talk to the database. Now, the things uh, the, totally change when I'm opening a new session here. I'll use the same two lines of code. Okay, so I've closed this earlier session and I'm opening a new session. Let me call it differently also. Session, session two equals 
open session. Now I'll say session two dot begin transaction. Now what I'll do is by getting the user uh, two object instead of doing it in the earlier session, I'm going to do it in the new session. Okay, and after that, I will close the session. Okay, so I have uh, session one, which pulls up user object, and I close it, and I have a session two here, which, which again, uh, pulls up this user object, it's the same user object, and then it closes the session. Now let's save and run this, let's see how many queries this results in. So here you can see there are two queries. So what's happening is, since the session is closed, the cache is closed as well. So opening a new session will result in a new query. So this is the problem that we're going to address by using cache. Once we implement cache, which is the second level cache, both these sessions are going to talk to the second level cache. And once we have an object in the second level cache, the session two is not going to talk to the database as well. It's going to get it from the second level cache. And only when the object is not in the second level cache, it's, it's only then that Hibernate goes and talks to the database. So this results in a lot of uh, efficient uh, use of resources. It's not going to talk to the database unless it's absolutely required.